you know, there was an initial run up right when the, the Fed cut their rates and then the crowd caught up to the news right there, literally right at the top for Bitcoin and the S&P. And then we see a downturn and then they started to get a little bit hesitant. Uh, and obviously we've been going back up ever since. But right now is the time where you start to see whether people mention, you know, those round numbers between 70 to 79K a lot. Or if people get fearful that we might we might go back down to 50 to 59K. Right now, both are quite low. Welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. Uh, with me today is Brian from Santamon. We're going to break down the different crypto metrics and stats about what's happening in the market. Uh, Brian, great to have you on. Good to be here, Tony. I think we've got uh, a pretty substantial amount of things we can get into and, and things are kind of celebratory and the markets for the first time in a long time, I think. Yeah, Brian, I mean, doing this a day after the Fed announcement that they're cutting rates by 50 basis points, Bitcoin is back over $63,000. Definitely want to look at the data, and that's where you come in. So uh, maybe we can start with what's the sentiment around the Fed and the cuts, and what are you hearing and seeing? Yeah, I'll, I'll show my screen here, and we can dive right into the sentiment side. I'll lead things off just by showing the overall mentions of any words related to Fed, rate, rates, cut, or inflation. And as you would imagine, the amount of discussion related to an event that happened for the first time in four and a half years, the last time this happened was March 15, 2020. So people are, are hyped and they're talking about it quite a bit because objectively, this should be a bullish event for crypto. Uh, it was interesting, right when the Fed cut rates around 11-ish a.m. Pacific time yesterday, there was an initial run-up followed by a huge drop-off. And yeah. uh, the stock markets actually ended down after they went up significantly to start. So that's actually quite typical when the crowd is anticipating something and the price is already a bit baked in, more so in the stock market than crypto, of course. But because it was already predicted to be like an 85% likely outcome for the Fed to cut rates, the prices had already been kind of creeping up. Bitcoin was already above 60K at the time the announcement was made. The S&P was already at all time high levels. So the, the idea was there was a bit of a buy the rumor, sell the news situation that I think was pretty short lived uh, by the time we went to bed here in the US, crypto was already starting to creep up, especially altcoins, uh, which I'll get into in a moment. But the initial reaction appears to be a lot of hype, um, a little bit of confusion because yesterday was a bit of a fake out day. So that distrust, I think, is is helping to fuel crypto higher right now because retail traders haven't quite FOMO'd in just yet like you would expect. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned the volatility, right? Usually I've noticed a pattern that anytime there's an announcement a week of uh, of an FOMC meeting or whatever it may be, there's tons of volatility. You can't really judge the market yet. Uh, you kind of have to let things cool down. Maybe next week we get a clearer understanding, but uh, Bitcoin is starting to move. I don't know if this is a true breakout to a new all-time high or you know it's making a lower high, so to speak, lower low on its way to finding the bottom. Yeah, it's obviously it's really tough to predict. And, and if we knew the future, uh, you know, we wouldn't even need jobs. Right. So it's yeah. I, I think um, I just put out an article yesterday talking about how the crowd is likely going to dictate whether we do see an all time high as a quick reaction to this news. Uh, I, I basically just talk about how, you know, there was an initial run up right when the, the Fed cut their rates, and then the crowd caught up to the news right there, literally right at the top for Bitcoin and the S&P. And then we see a downturn, and then they started to get a little bit hesitant. Uh, and obviously we've been going back up ever since. But right now is the time where you start to see whether people mention you know, those round numbers between 70 to 79K a lot, or if people get fearful that we might we might go back down to 50 to 59K. Right now, both 
are quite low and everyone's mm. celebrating the 60 to 69 K level. Of course, the mentions toward these numbers are up because we're now in them. Right. But when you start to see mentions of lower numbers than where we currently are or higher numbers from where we currently are, that's where you start to see perfect tops or perfect bottoms. Like we see here while I highlight 70 to 79, look at these past six months and how these spikes align with that faded green line going down right after those spikes happened. Or alternatively, you see how much bottoms correlated with these 50 to 59K mention spikes. So mm. I, that's probably the most important chart I'm going to be looking at over the next few weeks to see when people start to lean one way or another or anticipate you know those the potential all-time highs or a potential retrace mm. now from a social mention standpoint um you know how are people feeling uh are, are you seeing more positive signs or uh, i guess maybe is it the social dominance chart i can't remember which one it is that or sentiment yeah. Okay. So this this is I, I think we talked about it maybe once or twice before, but it's kind of a mm. custom metric that I made, which solely looks at the amount of positive sentiment keywords out there versus negative sentiment keywords or just overall posts. Mm. So our algorithm is able to differentiate if someone's saying I'm bullish, I'm buying versus uh, I, I think Bitcoin's going to go lower. I'm not going to buy till 40K, stuff like that. So we put all of those together and we make a ratio of all the positive comments versus all the negative comments throughout Twitter slash X, Reddit, Telegram, uh, 4chan, and even Bitcoin talk. And this is showing there's three big spikes that we've seen in the past three months. This is a super negative one that happened on July 4th, uh, right, I want to say before or after, I think it was before. Uh, the Trump assassination attempt. And then we went on this huge surge. Then we see this huge positive spike right before, about 24 hours before the top, as people were anticipating a new all-time high here. And then we go way down. And then we go super negative again back on August 4th, which was right at the bottom. So these negative spikes here, the only two times where we were actually seeing a higher ratio of negative comments than positive comments, they were literally the perfect times to buy. This mm -hmm. was literally the perfect time to sell. It's not always gonna be that clear cut, but I didn't fluff the numbers in any way. This is just the last three months of this ratio and how it's um, how it's dictating where prices go next. So people who think, oh, it's only whales that are controlling the markets. No, there's two elements. It's the whales on one side that are accumulating, accumulating or dumping at any time versus the retail average Joe traders who are constantly getting it wrong and giving you perfect counter trading signals at any given time. Mm -hmm. Great insights. Uh, speaking of whales, what have they been doing from an accumulation standpoint? Are they still buying? Yeah, it's, it's looking really good, to be honest. Uh, just in the past three months, going back to June 18th, they were holding 16.16 .16 million Bitcoin in total then, they're up to 16.18 million now. To be precise, they've accumulated about 22,356 BTC over the past three months. If we go back a full year, I'm gonna update this axis so it isn't off the screen. So this is what it looked like going back a full year. They've added, if we just account for any wallet that holds 10 or more BTC, 242,970 Bitcoin during that time. And wow. they're not showing signs of slowing down as we showed the zoomed in version. It's, it's just continuing to go up. And unless they flatten out or go down like they did briefly here, uh, the, the likeliness of another big top and a huge sell off is, is pretty slim. Gotcha. So they continue to buy. Um, are you able to delineate between what's an ETF wallet versus, uh, uh, you know, just maybe a high net worth individual? And that might be very hard, but I'm just curious. Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. It's something that I've talked to the team a little bit about. Um, and I, I'd love if we eventually have that for mm. Bitcoin labeling, 
we're a bit limited in finding whether it's an exchange wallet or ETF wallet. Uh, there is a little more if we look at like Ethereum, for example. Um, mm. ETH is where we have the most data uh, for any any asset that is under the ERC20 blockchain. We have a little more labeling in terms of where wallets are coming from. Might take just a few seconds to load here. Why don't I come back to it just so we don't have to sit and wait, but oh, there we go. So we can see here, if we just look at like the last 30 days of transactions, we can sort by the largest to smallest over that time. And we can see like the, the biggest Ethereum one, for example, was a centralized exchange move to another centralized exchange. And we have a lot of those that are happening all the time. This was an actual withdrawal. This was a withdrawal as well. Um, the deposits are the ones that we look out for. And I wish we had that for Bitcoin. I, I assume that we eventually will because our developers are amazing. Uh, and I want to give them a shout out for good reason. But for now, we can't really di really differentiate between ETF wallets and regular on-chain wallets. Got it. Yeah. And I know like the folks at Bitwise, they do share their uh, wallet address where they store their Bitcoin, but not all the issuers do that. But if they all did, it would be uh, pretty easy for the market to get an idea of who has how much real time, uh, you know, what's moving in and out. And you could segment those wallet addresses from the rest of the folks out there. Totally. I, I think the fact that there's public info out there means it's a matter of time until we have that uh, on sentiment. Awesome. Um, now, all coins, uh, you know, they, they've been struggling for a lot because Bitcoin obviously has been in a corrective phase. Um, however, we're seeing some of them, individual altcoins are starting to move a bit. Uh, what are you seeing on your end? Yeah, I mean, there have been plenty of breakouts just in the past 24 hours. I see BitTensor and Celestia making huge runs. I think Celestia, yeah, it's it's the top performer, at least within the top 100 market caps over the past week, up 51%. We also mm. see assets like SWE up 30%, BitTensor up about 32 and a half. Immutable X up 20, Phantom having a huge run up 34 and a half percent. So plenty of altcoins having individual runs. And that's where these, you know, uh, metrics are just so handy because when you start to see things get bullish or even flat, there's always individual assets out there that are getting huge stories at any given time. I made this model for myself that's basically using the Santiment API to tell me which networks are getting hot or are getting super cold compared to their normal averages at any given time. And each of them have a label here. I know it's a ton, it looks like a spaceship, <laughs> I, I understand, but the moral of the story is if you look at any of these labels, the more red they are, the hotter the network is. For example, Phantom, which mm. is one of the best performers over the past week and even past day, it's not a coincidence that it's seeing a lot of hot network activity right now. That's why it's showing as red. Meanwhile, a meme coin like Pepe struggling at the moment and seeing very little network activity. So the, the rule of thumb is it's not just an automatic bullish symbol. If you see red next to one of these labels, it means that it's more likely to shift the current direction that it's going. Uh, because a, a sudden spike in address activity or network growth or or FOMO from retail traders, it means that uh, if the coin is going up rapidly, it's more likely to turn down. So yesterday, when Phantom was kind of flat, this was a perfect signal that it was about to erupt. This is uh, two days ago, and then this is the past 24 hours. So this was a sign that it's time to buy, and this was, is a sign that there's a lot of FOMO and we actually might see a local top soon. So the question is really, which assets are super hot network wise without really seeing a lot of uptick in price yet? Aragon is one that's standing out. Um, it's kind of orange red and the price, uh, it, it's showing it's only up 2% in the past 24 hours. That's actually underperforming versus the rest of the markets. So that would be one to look out for. Origin over here, only up 2% in the past 24 hours, but very hot network activity. Just trying mm. to eyeball any others that might be showing up here. Uh, that one's already seeing a lot of surging 
I'd say Ergo is a good candidate as well. And th this is obviously not investment advice. This is just going off of what the model is telling us uh, mm -hmm. in terms of which are the biggest risers. We can also even see uh, by category. So for example, whale transactions, Origin Protocol is standing out as the biggest riser in terms of whale transactions right now. Phantom, mm. biggest riser in terms of active addresses and network growth. So I, I love this model. It's, it's one of my go-tos to find things to post about on a daily basis. And for those interested, um, I, can, I can leave a link for this model for you, Tony, after this call. Um, and you can share it in your, uh, your video link if you'd like. Yeah, that would be perfect. I think uh, this is very insightful data. I want to personally take the time to go through it. So I'm sure the audience would love to go through it as well. Um, Brian, as you're talking about this, what are you seeing for SUI? And the reason why I'm bringing that up, they had a lot of big announcement partnerships this past week, and there's been a lot of talks. I've seen some big investors like Raul Powell talk about it and so forth. So I'm, I'm curious what's happening on that front. Yeah, let's check it out together. I, I admittedly have not looked too much into Sui's data, but they're up to the number 25 spot market cap wise, and they've mm -hmm. made some noise and it definitely should be studied. Um, I, I want to mention that it's not an ERC20 asset. So our data on it is going to be limited to uh, mostly volume and sentiment related as uh, metrics, but mm -hmm. that's certainly still very valuable. And one thing that immediately pops out to me is it's seeing its biggest volume right now in about six months. So clearly people are trading into this trend right now, mm. which is generally a good thing and indicates that the trend can continue, assuming that Bitcoin is able to keep up its own momentum or at least stay flat. If Bitcoin falls, altcoin metrics like this become irrelevant because they're gonna be tied uh, directly to Bitcoin's performance. Hmm. Uh, so SWE is in terms of volume, it's looking fantastic right now. It's continuing to grow. And then if I go down to social volume, way down here, huge spikes in um, discussion rate and in terms of its dominance of discussion rate compared to the rest of the markets. So we see this as a perfect local top. And this was kind of a local top as well. Generally, you don't want to see huge spikes in discussion rate as prices rise. I mm. would imagine if we zoom in a little bit to the past week, make this a bit more granular. And I'm going to make this, we'll call it 15 minutes. Ah, that's too, too tight. We'll just do one hour. Okay. So we want to see social volume going down as it actually kind of is now over the past 24 hours. Mm. If we starts to make another run up here at a dollar 35 to dollar 40, we don't want to see chatter start to lift up again. It's a very good sign that it's low at the moment, meaning that if it does start to pump up again, it's going to be doing so with very little resistance from the crowd. Uh, once the FOMO picks up, that's where you might see a top once again. So in terms of SUI's performance, it's probably going to be highly dictated by how much the crowd is paying direct attention to this asset versus just the other altcoins that are having their own breakouts, which there are a lot of right now. Mm. Uh, it seems that things are starting to turn a bit bullish with Bitcoin moving, some of these altcoins breaking out, but uh, we still got to give it time because historically, uh, September has been not so good for markets. So you know, it could be a fake out a bit and then we get a dump and then come Q4, maybe that's when things really start to move. But who knows, right? We don't have a crystal ball, but uh, good to see some activity here. Yeah, the more people talk about timing in the markets, the less it typically matters. If the narrative throughout Twitter and Reddit and what have you is that September is a bad month, September will end up being a very good month. If mm -hmm. people don't believe in the hype around certain months or timing, uh, that's when timing starts to matter more. So uh, markets are always moving the opposite direction of the crowd's expectation. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't mean that lightly, like we just continue to see that being the case, like clockwork. Um, I, I personally think 
even with crypto being around a little over 15 years now, it's still too small of a sample size for us to look at one given month or one given season and say, that's the time to buy, that's the time to sell because it happened four other times or seven other times. Uh, maybe after 150 years, we'll have enough data to, to say what months or weeks are good. But I, I'm not a believer in timing the markets and saying, oh, you can just pour your money into something else until you know December. And then it's a good time to scoop up Bitcoin. Because if everyone believes that yeah. and it's a zero sum game, how is that possible? Yeah, for sure. And and great point that the market always does the opposite of the herd, right? Uh, the herd is never right. <laughs> well, for the most part, probably 99% of the time, uh, maybe there's a 1% chance they are. But uh, time and time again, I, I see that where, uh, you know, everybody's saying one thing and the market does the opposite. Totally. Yeah, it's um, it's a great lesson for trading psychology, even for, you know, equity trading and other things. It's, there are always, uh, crowd narratives that form and when people start to get unanimous like everyone thought that right when the bitcoin having you know bitcoin would take off and then oh it goes down the next two weeks right these are perfect lessons on on how to be a contrarian and um, what you should really be paying attention to and of course you can use sentiments data to help you get an idea of what's happening right and and yes, how sir. to be that contrarian so um good stuff brian uh always great insights thank you so much man always my friend good catching up with you